the bones of the skull show numerous foramina for the entry and exit of various structures these are very important from examination point of view as well as clinical point of view the foramina in the anterior cranial fossae are the groove for the superior sagittal sinus it begins in the anterior cranial fossa and runs up in the skull cap the foramen cecum present between the frontal crest and the crista gallae it is usually blind but it may have an emissary vein from the upper part of the nose to the superior sagittal sinus the anterior ethmoidal foramen the anterior ethmoidal foramen gives passage to anterior ethmoidal nerve and vessels whereas the posterior ethmoidal foramen only gives exit to the posterior ethmoidal vessels the foramina of cribriform plate of ethmoid give entry to 10 to 12 olfactory nerve rootlets this is the first cranial nerve behind it is the optic canal which gives passage to the optic nerve which is the second cranial nerve and the ophthalmic artery which is a branch of the internal carotid artery the middle cranial fossa in the middle shows a hypophyseal fossa for lodging the hypophysis cerebri on the side it shows superior orbital fissure below the medial end of superior orbital fissure is the foramen rotundum through which the second division of trigeminal or maxillary nerve passes out behind that is the foramen ovale through which the important mandibular division of trigeminal nerve passes also passes is the also passing is the accessory meningeal artery lesser petrosal nerve and an emissary vein so the mnemonic is male m a l e behind foramen ovale is foramen spinosum through which the middle meningeal artery enters the cranial cavity and there is also a meningeal branch of mandibular nerve behind that there may be an emissary sphenoidal foramen connecting the cavernous sinus with the pterygoid plexus of vein medial to that is the foramen lacerum in, the, in on the this aspect of foramen lacerum the internal carotid artery and nerve plexus pass across its superior end this foramen will be seen again in the inferior aspect and occasionally a meningeal branch of ascending pharyngeal artery and emissary vein from cavernous sinus passes through it the figure shows obliquely directed superior orbital fissure and its contents it is divided into three parts lateral middle and medial through the lateral part passes lacrimal and frontal these are branches of ophthalmic division of trigeminal and the trochlea the fourth cranial nerve the superior ophthalmic vein and the recurrent meningeal branch of lacrimal artery which in turn is a branch of the ophthalmic artery the middle part gives passage to upper and lower divisions of the oculomotor nerve the nasociliary nerve which is a branch of ophthalmic division of trigeminal and lastly the sixth cranial nerve the abducens nerve 
to the medial part passes only the inferior of thalamic vein also seen in this figure is the optic canal containing the optic nerve and the ophthalmic artery the figure shows the hypophyseal fossa and close and closing or housing the important hypophysis cerebri and this hypophysis cerebri has is covered by a fold of dura mater which is known as the diaphragma cellae this diaphragma cellae prevents the weight of the brain from crushing the poor pituitary gland this figure shows the trigeminal ganglia lying on the medial part of anterior face of petrous temporal bone seems to divide into three branches the ophthalmic which leaves it through the superior orbital fissure the maxillary which leaves through foramen rotundum the mandibular which leaves through foramen ovale the deep motor branch motor root is seen on the deeper aspect and still posterolateral to it is the foramen spinosum which gives entry to the important middle meningeal artery on the anterior surface is the fissure for the greater petrosal nerve this figure shows the important foramen lacerum this foramen lacerum is filled by fibrocartilage and it only transmits through and through one emissary vein and a and a meningeal artery at the posterior superior end of the foramen lacerum is the upper opening of the parotid canal through its anterior wall there is a canal which is known as pterygoid canal which gives passage to nerve of the pterygoid canal which opens into the pterygopalatine fossa the internal carotid artery is passing through the petrous temporal bone that is the lower opening and the upper opening is in relation to the foramen lacerum the posterior cranial fossa on the posterior surface of the petrous temporal bone is an oblique canal the internal acoustic meatus which gives passage to seventh nerve eighth nerve and the labyrinthine vessels below and little medial to it is a big foramen which is known as the jugular foramen through which the ninth tenth and eleventh cranial nerves pass and also the sigmoid sinus continues as the internal jugular vein this lies in the posterior part of the jugular foramen the largest foramen of the skull is also present in the posterior cranial fossa it gives exit to various structures which we'll do just now and anterior to that is the anterior condylar canal which is seen both from the inner aspect and from the outer aspect and gives passage to the 12th cranial nerve there is another foramen which is the posterior condylar canal which gives passage to an emissary vein figure 9.7 the figure shows the foramen magnum which is narrow anteriorly and wide posteriorly through the narrow part structures passing are the apical ligament the upper band of the cruciate ligament and the membrana tectoria through the wider part passes the junction of the medulla oblongata with the spinal cord and its three meninges through the subarachnoid space passes the vertebral artery one on each side and the vertebral artery gives branches the anterior spinal joins to form a single anterior spinal artery and the posterior spinal artery remains separate and also entering the cranial cavity is the spinal root of the accessory nerve between the vertebral artery and spinal root of accessory nerve is the first 
truth of the ligamentum denticulatum. The figure shows the structures lying in the internal acoustic meatus. The large one is the eighth nerve or the vestibulocochlear nerve and the two roots of the seventh nerve. The sensory root is interposed between the motor root of the seventh and the eighth nerve. And we have the labyrinthine vessels. The labyrinthine artery is a branch of the basilar artery, supplies the internal ear and it is characterized by important fact that it is an end artery. Foramina on the base of skull. In the anterior most part is the incisive fossa which gives passage to greater palatine vessels and terminal part of nasopalatine nerve. On the posterolateral corner of the heart palate is the greater palatine foramen which gives passage to greater palatine artery and anterior palatine nerve. Posterior to this are two to three lesser palatine foramen giving passage to lesser palatine vessels and posterior palatine nerve. On the, in the middle part of the base, there is an important big round foramen which is the carotid canal lying on the inferior surface of petrous temporal bone. This is where it enters and then comes on the middle cranial fossa on the posterior superior part of the jugular of the foramen lacera. This contains the internal carotid artery accompanied by its venous plexus and sympathetic plexus. There is a nerve to pterygoid canal which is lying in the anterior wall of the foramen lacera and contains the nerve of pterygoid canal which opens into the pterygopalatine fossa. Also seen is the palatino-vaginal canal which is not often seen. Palatino-vaginal canal and it gives passage to the pharyngeal branch of the pterygopalatine ganglia. Sometimes if canal is also seen which is known as the vomero-vaginal canal. Then there is the jugular fossa Posterior part contains the beginning of internal jugular vein and anterior to that there is the exit of 11th, 10th and 9th nerves. The anterior condylar canal is there which gives passage to the 12th nerve. Important foramen, very important foramen is the stylomastoid foramen which gives exit to the 7th cranial nerve and on a more posterior plane is the posterior condylar canal which gives passage to an emissary vein.